Now let's look at the joints of the horse's hind limb. So we'll begin with the hip joint, and then the stifle, and then the hock. So the, the proper anatomical name for the hip joint is the coxofemoral joint. And then we come down to the stifle, and that this is the femoral tibial joint. And that's because the larger bone of these two, the tibia and the fibula, is the tibia. And then the hock joint is the tibia tarsal joint. Again, because it's the tibia that comes down to engage with the bones of the horse's hock. So we've got the coxofemoral joint, the hip joint, then the femoral tibial joint, the stifle joint, and the tibia tarsal joint, the hock that, <coughs> excuse me, is part of the hock joint. <coughs> and then below that, the joints are the same name. The fetlock is the metatarsal phalangeal joint and then the proximal and distal interphalangeal joints. The hock. So we think of the hock of the horse as one joint but actually it's a collection of joints and for the AFA exams you need to be able to identify the principal joints that, that create the hock. So we'll begin with the most proximal bone, the tibia. It's longer than this, this is just the distal end of the bone. The tibia sits on top of the talus. So the talus is that bone that has these prominent ridges. So we got the tibia, then we have the talus. Below the talus we have the central tarsal bone, and below that we have the third tarsal bone, and below that we have the third metatarsal. So it's these bones that form the principal joints that we need to be aware of that create the hock. So we'll begin by naming the most proximal one and work distally. So the joint between the tibia and the talus is called the tarsocrural joint or using proper anatomical terms the tibiotarsal joint. So you can see the distal end of the tibia has two prominent grooves that are on a slight angle that then match up with the prominent ridges that are again angled of the talus. So that's the tibiotarsal joint. Then the talus sits on top of the central tarsal bone and that forms the proximal intertarsal joint. Then the central tarsal bone sits on top of the third tarsal bone and that creates the distal intertarsal joint. And then the third tarsal bone sits on top of the third metatarsal and that forms the tarsal metatarsal joint. So proximal end of the third metatarsal, the third tarsal bone, the central tarsal bone, the talus, thing is a jigsaw puzzle, <clears throat> and then the tibia. Now there are other joints that form the hock, the largest one of course being between the calcanus and the, the caudal or plantar face of the talus, but the principal joints that we need to be aware of are the ones that create disease. On a horse, if it had a bog spavin, it would be in the tarsocrural joint, the tibiotarsal joint. If it had a bone spavin, usually that will be found on these joints between the distal end of the talus and the central tarsal bone, or the central tarsal bone and the third tarsal bone, or the third tarsal bone and the third metatarsal bone.